Deliverance is a work of sanctification. Sanctification means that you are being led by the Holy Spirit into full agreement with God. Your mind, the, the soul is comprised of three parts, mind, will, and emotions. So your emotions, your will, and your mind are filtered through the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul said those who walk after the Spirit of God shall be known as the sons of God. Your soul is sanctified or whole when you allow your responses to be filtered through the Holy Spirit. So when your mind is fortified by the Spirit of God, when your emotions are filtered through the Spirit of God, not saying that you don't have bad days, not saying that you're perfect, not saying that you don't have emotional responses, but you lean into the Holy Spirit. Amen. When your will is subdued to the will of God, this is the part, this is what this this is what sanctification is doing. So the enemy comes to attack and seep into cracked or traumatic places in your soul. So when you have traumatic experiences and your mind can't remember certain areas in your life, you black out certain areas in your life, it's because of a traumatic experience. And the enemy takes, um, uh, takes advantage of traumas. He doesn't have the power to cause traumas, but he takes advantage of them. So that's how he seeps into the soul. That's how you can make a decision. That's why you can, when you see somebody, you can say, oh, I forgave that person because, I, you know, I said I forgave them. In your mind, you have forgiven them, but your emotions, when you see them, you want to punch them in the face. Right. Come on. Come on. Right. True that. Yes, sir. Because your soul processes differently. So your spirit is rejuvenated, but your soul has to go through sanctification. That's why the Bible says that we have to be led by the Spirit of God. That's why he's a comforter. Because sanctification is uncomfortable. Yeah. Sanctification doesn't always feel good. Because it means you have to apologize to people who never say, I'm sorry. That means you have to forgive people who won't admit they're wrong. That means you have to love people who judge you. That means That's what sanctification does. It moves you into uncomfortable places so that you can be made whole and be fully led by the power of God. So deliverance is a working of the soul. So yes, you can speak in tongues because the Holy Spirit is still attached to your spirit. And you know, we used to hear this scripture where the Bible says that the Holy Ghost won't dwell in an unclean place. That doesn't mean he'll leave. He's not skittish. That means he's committed to stay there and become a maid. He's committed to stay there and become a butler. He's going to clean you out. He's going to sanctify you. He's going to mop your nasty floors. He's going to wipe down your dusty walls. He's going to help you become clean, purged, and purified for the work of the kingdom. Amen. You need to be sanctified so that the anointing that comes with your spirit can have full impact. Yeah. Full impact. Let me hear, let me help you. Because a lot of that's why gifting and callings come without repentance. That's why you have people who can prophesy and call out people's social security numbers and go to the hotel and sleep with every Tom, Dick, and Harry that they want to. Because the gift is given to you perfectly. Yeah. The gift is given to you right. God don't give partial gifts. He doesn't give broken things. When he gave it to you, every good and perfect gift comes from God. Comes from God. Amen. But you have gifted people who have tormented souls. And so their gift will only take them so far. You see their gift will go so far and then they'll scramble. Something happened and they'll, you'll find out that they're not moving. They're still anointed, still gifted. But people don't want to receive from them because they've established a nasty character. The sanctification of your soul is the, for the for your um it's supposed to be so that your anointing can be more received fully. When your soul is sanctified, you have a better character. You're known to be integral, so more people want to hear what you have to say. I don't care how anointed you are. If you nasty to people, they don't care about your anointing, and they won't receive your anointing. 
Doesn't mean you're not anointed. It just means people don't care about no appreciate your anointing. But you you nasty to me. Appreciate your anointing, but you slept with my cousin and I know it. Appreciate your anointing, but you're stealing money from the church, and we know it. There you go. So people won't receive the word from you. They won't receive the spirit of God flowing out of you because your character has been proven to be unsanctified. Amen. That's why preachers need deliverance. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. I know you started Amen. preaching at 15 years old, but you never dealt with the molestation that happened to you when you were 11. I know you were anointed in the prophesy and see houses and cars. I know, I know, I know. But you still need to allow the Holy Spirit to work something in your belly. You must be sanctified. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sorry, that holiness in me still. All right, it's okay. I know we were jeans in my church, but that woman is still Speak down your in word. Body. Speak your word. <laughs> Tell it's the truth. Shame the devil. Shame the devil. Shame the devil. So don't ever allow the reality of or, or the, the activity of your gift to make you blind to the reality of your soul. Amen. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Don't allow the activity or, of your gift to make you blind to the reality of your soul. Just because you can still speak in tongues and still hear God does not mean that your soul has been tested. You gotta allow the Holy Ghost of God to sanctify your soul. That means that some pastors need to sit and go through deliverance. Amen. That means musicians and worship leaders and talk talkers need to sit and go through deliverance. Because think about this thing, it started at two. Amen. How old are you? Uh, Subtract two. Uh, wow. That means for 58 years the enemy has been attacking. 71 years. Wow. Amen. 30 years the enemy has been attacking. And you think one cry at the altar, one roll on the floor. No, 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 no. You got to allow the Holy Spirit to sanctify you and allow that thing to be worked into you and allow that thing to be purged out of you. That's why I teach that you don't only need deliverance, you need accountability and counseling. Amen. Amen. Hi, I'm Taurus. I'm a deliverance minister. I'm a pastor and a prophet. And I travel and teach and preach and I love God, but I got a therapist. Amen. Amen. Why? Because I just taught you how the enemy builds structures in your mind, right? Y'all see that? After deliverance happens, that means the enemy is cast out of your mind. Gone. It's gone. But you still need help to rebuild positive strongholds. Restructure positive strongholds. What do we know positive strongholds to be rooted in? Philippians 4 and 8. Right. Think on these things. Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, honorable, of good report. Think, this, is, this is where you must build your mind after deliverance. And you can't do that by yourself. Amen. If you could do it by yourself, we wouldn't be a body fitting the joint together. That's why you need accountability. You need brothers and sisters who know your business, who can tell you when you're starting to think, well, no, no, you're not really thinking about this the right way. That's why you need a counselor to say, no, you're still regressing towards what you used to think like. You need somebody who can tell you how to restructure your mind. Y'all with me? Amen. Amen. Y'all can't get mad at me. Y'all can't want to preach. <laughs> preach. Preach. Bring it on. Any questions? Let me calm down. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, we, I, a lot of people say, well, I'm a Christian, so I must go to a Christian therapist. My therapist isn't Christian. But I did research. I want to know what you believe. I want to know about your family life. Before you ask me questions, let me ask you some questions. All right. Are you married? How's your marriage? How are your kids? What type, what, what type of friend environment? I want to know what you believe. I want to know your value systems. And if your value systems align with where I'm trying to go, then yes, you can counsel me. But you can't tell me that you believe in the universe. <laughs> 
and you believe your vibes and energies and you see auras and you want to counsel me. No, thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate your degree, but I need somebody who understands where I'm trying to go and can speak to that. So you need, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Christian counselor, because some of these Christian counselors don't know the Bible. They get these degrees offline. Don't share degrees offline, because I got one. But they get these degrees offline. Don't even own a Bible. And don't know the Bible. So you need to make sure you, you have a counselor that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think 
it has a lot to do with that, with the women that I work with, mm -hmm. because the times that I have to stand in front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my time is short with them and they're transit. Mm -hmm. So I have to kind of go in there and yeah. with an yeah. impact. Yeah, and that's why that's why being prophetic uh -huh. and, and doing deliverance, they have to go hand in hand. So what you'll find in those short moments like that, you'll start getting words of knowledge. Yeah. And the Lord will start showing you stuff like, or the Lord will start showing you uh, where the enemy has attacked them. or what. Because I was doing deliverance on one lady one time, and the Lord showed me that she was raped in the back seat of a car. And I called it out. And the enemy screamed and screeched and came out of her. But the word of knowledge is a powerful tool in deliverance. So that's Amen. something you need to push into, pray into, ask God to expand. Because it's a powerful tool to help people be free. Because some people can't remember everything. Remember I told you trauma, black stuff out of their mind? Yeah. So the Holy Ghost knows everything. Pam Ross, where my mom said, the Holy Ghost knows how to make spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> and so... The Holy Ghost knows and he'll give you the information to speak into certain areas and it'll cause that thing to open up and that person to be set free for. So that is... And that's what's been happening. The more and more girls are coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was hesitant to work in that gift, um, that ability, I should say, because, you know, I don't, I don't want to go beyond what they cannot understand. Mm -hmm. So I have to be cautious in that respect. But because of that... Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom, and he'll talk, show you how to flow in it to make sure that more and more people are set free. I had a hand back here. No, no, my, my thing was, was uh, I guess, coincided with the deja vu. Uh, years ago, we, we, we have the salon here, and that, and that particular thing happened to me where I was a nanosecond ahead of a uh, course of events. Mm -hmm. And I asked the Lord, what was that about? And out, it was revealed to me that uh, we being a spirit, we're not bound by time. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are bound by time. Mm -hmm. So my spirit had went into the future and experienced something that when my body and conscious soul caught up, caught up with it, it all came to my remembrance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In order to me uh, remember, it's first good. you have to remember. <laughs> so... When I got to that point in time, it started happening, and I was a nanosecond ahead of it, the course of events, and I saw it unfolding, you know, the hair stood up on my arm yeah. and everything, yeah. when I, when the, and I saw this thing unfold, so the Lord said that we be in a spirit, are not bound by time, exactly. so, but when I came to that point in time, and like you said, we being led by the Holy Spirit, that we're right on track as mm -hmm. to where we're supposed to be in that point in time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna steal that, by the way. You can have it. You can have it. I'm so glad that God gave that to us. Praise God. You can do it. I'm praying for it all. Amen. I want to piggyback on what you what you're saying about the being the right being the place and seeing something, and also uh -huh. what Lewis was saying, the remembrance and the renewing. Uh, Tasha, mm -hmm. you remember. Yeah, you, yeah. So, I got a witness in this room that I talked at yeah. probably about two weeks ago. We knew we were going to buy. And then, you, when I sat down here, rent, lease, or own were the three things I wrote down, and you said out of your mind. Mm -hmm. So, that I was told right then that I'm in the right place right now. Right now. Amen. So, thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. Amen. I don't know where you are. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. We get to be caught up in this at the age of two. Mm -hmm. You got to do with the mm -hmm. So I can make you feel flexible to your mind. I'm 66. Mm -hmm. And they've been just been working at me and this thing that they have been working for mm -hmm. six to four years. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, um, mm -hmm. one year of their mm -hmm. okay. I got six to four years back here. Mm -hmm. I don't have six to four years up here. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to get ready to get the six to four mm -hmm. in this to the time I got right here. I'm going to tell you in my next session. <laughs> At the lunch, I'm going to tell you exactly what it's called is breaking legal ground. Mm -hmm. 
It don't take God 64 years. It take the enemy 64 years because he, he don't have the kind of authority God has. All it, ha all it takes is agreement and commitment to per process. That's good. Can you put the mic to her mouth so we can hear her? She was asking what is the difference between deja vu and open visions. Um, I don't want to, so this is a prophetic topic, and I don't want to drive here, but I'll answer this, okay? So, visions and open visions. Open visions are literally when you feel like you're being taken out of your body. All right, so you feel like you're being taken out of your body and you're moved into a space, almost called, uh, some people use it in, uh, simultaneously with trance. So you remember the scripture where Ezekiel said that I was taken up in the spirit and placed into a valley of dry bones? It's, it's a, when you're awake that you know of and you're taking into that place. And so that is more like how he said that your spirit has already been somewhere and your body and your soul just catch up to it like a rubber band snapping into place. I, I really like that. But yes, that's what that is. in eternity and the Holy Spirit is our translator basically mm -hmm. sometimes or the way that the Holy Spirit gives us the information that God is trying to get to us is through different downloads mm -hmm. so that's why people have open visions people have dreams people have hear stuff people see stuff it's because what God is God is trying to get something across to you so the way that you push into that is you actively ask I teach people in the prophetic and one thing I teach them is you have to actively ask the Holy Spirit questions. Mm -hmm. So if I want to know something in the middle of service or in the middle of a, div a, a deliverance session, I have that confidence that he's right with me at all times. I have that awareness with, with him that I'll say, Holy Spirit, what is this? Mm -hmm. And he'll tell me. Or I'll have to wait and he'll tell me later. Mm -hmm. But you have to have that kind of partnership. So you start seeing three, 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 three. Ask Holy Spirit, do you want me to go play this lottery? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask him that. <laughs> Don't ask him that. But if you say, yeah, uh, uh, I'll give you my cash up. I wish you would. Uh, <laughs> but you literally start to have to ask Holy Spirit what that is and treat him like he's a person. Because we treat the Holy Spirit like he's an energy and not a person. Excuse me. Don't get me started down that road. I'm just like picking it and rolling and speaking in tongues in this room. Mm -hmm. That I'm, a, I'm going to answer that. I'm going to answer your question too. I want y'all to write these down and don't let me start teaching and, and forget. But you'll start hearing the answer when I start teaching. And, uh, but um, I probably won't forget. Go ahead. I just wanted to say thank you for um, affirming the fact that counselors are okay mm -hmm. in the body of Christ because 
I like to refer people. I think that there's the Bible says there's safety in the multitude, in the multitude of counselors. And yeah. I think as a minister, I think it's irresponsible of me if I don't have mm. certain tools yes. or knowledge or whatever in that area of a person's mind. I think it's mm. irresponsible and poor stewardship over that person. So I do refer to counselors and I recommend it. Mm -hmm. And you know, we are a body and the body and the natural is designed to heal itself. Mm -hmm. And so we are surrounded by people who can add to the healing mm -hmm. and can help mm -hmm. us, just yep. like you. Yep. So yeah. thank you for that. Thank you, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I grew up in an environment where it was all spirit and no counseling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had an uncle who was a bishop from much like I do now, he traveled the country, passing out demons, <coughs> prophesying, healing the sick. Um, much like what I'm doing right now, the difference is he was also working roots, and uh, he got literally, Ancestry.com has literally destroyed his name. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that DNA, y'all ever heard of Ancestry.com? Yeah. Start doing DNA? Yeah. The man of God literally, we, we are, He's dead and gone, but we have 50-year-old children who are coming up. Because mm. he was traveling and doing all but he wasn't receiving counseling. He wasn't, so we have cousins popping up. Ancestry is literally messing up his legacy. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, I deleted my account. I said, oh, 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 no more cousins. No more cousins. <laughs> no more cousins. Because people will sit in church and be unprocessed. Amen. And it's, a, it's a, a mark against the body of Christ. Amen. Yes, sir. To only offer sermons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no mm -hmm. other service to humans uh, who, who have so many different types of experiences. Your sermons are so cute. But there's more. You know? Amen. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you also for coming because I have gone through deliverance for certain uh, areas of my life, but it's never really been completely explained the way it's been explained today. And you know, sometimes you think you know something because of an experience, but you don't know it until it's actually mapped out and laid out in the way that you can actually understand it. And then when you start understanding, it's like, oh my like, I could have said that. Let that go along. Oh, and now I'm saying, I'm like, Lord, I mean, it's just cut, it's cut and dry. But we make it, it's like it's coming from me, like, oh my goodness, I can't do this. I'm going to get through this. I mean, I just appreciate you coming and letting this matter. It's a matter that. That's what I believe. So I'm a very, Ms. Didi, I'm a practical teacher and I'm a direct personality. So I'm not. No type of uh, fluff for anybody to. to I, I want you to understand it because I want you to do it. Yeah. I'm not trying to monopolize an industry. I want the kingdom of God to be equipped. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Is healthy. It's a needed part of the body. It's not something that's 
to be separated from deliverance. Because you have some churches who do deliverance and no counseling. You have some churches who do counseling, counseling and no deliverance. We do both in all nations. Any questions? Uh, one more question. Go ahead. How do the strongholds that repeat itself through your thought patterns work with familiar spirits? Um, so familiar spirits, generational curses are about the same thing. So familiar spirits are welcomed into your life through a generational contract. We'll call it a generational contract. So it's literally you inheriting a spirit, that's what familiar spirits are, familiar family or family. It's a spirit that is uh, a part of your bloodline that comes through your um, blood. So you have, the way that they work with thought patterns is, thought patterns and strongholds is either through two ways. Either they work through nurture or nature. Y'all ever heard that in a psych psychology term? So you can be born into a generational curse by nurture or by nature. I'll give you an example. Nurture means that you are brought up in an environment and you are taught these behaviors. So you hear these things and so you learn to think this way because your parents thought this way. See how that familiar thing works? So your mama was always fussing and only communicated through yelling. So you, when you have children, you always fuss and communicate through yelling. Or, or your daddy was an alcoholic and because you saw that, you learned the way that he responds to pressures and different things. So it becomes connected to your family because y'all are um, raising each other in the same family traditions. That makes sense? The way it comes through your nature, your bloodline, your DNA, is by, for, for an example, I was never taught, my grandmother would raise me Pentecostal holiness. She never taught me anything about witchcraft, Voodoo, clairvoyance, car reading, herb magic, conjuring, nothing like that. But I've always had an affinity towards horror movies, towards witchcraft. I've had witches walk up to me in the mall and say, you have such a bright aura, can I touch you? I've had witches walk up to me in the barber shop because it's a part of my blood. Amen. Well, it was my blood, I had a blood transfusion. Amen. <laughs> yeah, it's, a part of, it's a part of my DNA. So that familiar spirit came through. It comes through your environment you're raised in. The voice of the significant other has a lot to do with how familiar spirits are passed on through generational curses. So what your mama says to you, what your daddy says to you, what your sibling says to you, that's very important in shaping perspectives and thought patterns. <clears throat> but also things can come through through your bloodline. My, my, my mama didn't even talk about that, uh, that witchcraft stuff. But I literally grew up uh, walking around pretending to be uh, a wizard <laughs> as a child. It's in my blood. Mm -hmm. um, I had an incident with a lady who I admitted to uh, 